Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be a lecture on selecting and working with media. This is Lecture A. The learning objectives for the Selecting and Working with Media unit are number one, select appropriate instructional media for a given lesson plan and objectives and goals. Number two, select and customize images to embed in the training materials. And number three, select and customize video, like screen captures, to embed in training materials. Let's quickly review where we are in the ADDIE system and what you have to accomplish in preparing your training course. You will start to notice that even though there are defined steps in the ADDIE process, sometimes you may be working a couple steps at the same time, and you should never lose sight of the entire project. You should have completed the analysis process and started the design work. In this unit, we will continue to design the training experience and begin the development work. Be sure you have clearly defined your training needs and understand the learner and organizational environment and constraints. You should have clear and concise learning objectives and keep these close at hand so you can refer to them during this phase of work. You may already have defined some images or video you want to use and you should have a general idea of how you present the training content. In this unit, we will examine some basic concepts about the use of text, images, and video in training, and then apply this knowledge as you create a few sample training modules. Always make sure you have a purpose or reason for why you use each image or video in a presentation or course. Some trainers and speakers fall in love with PowerPoint transitions, clip art, and pictures that have no relation to the words or concepts on the slides. I am sure you have been in the audience when the speaker used the PowerPoint screeching tire sounds. If the sounds and images do not add information, they are distracting to the students and will negatively impact the learning. Text and images make a good course better by making it more interesting, visually stimulating, and adding multiple methods of learning content. Media objects can be used to explain complex topics or data, demonstrate a skill or technology, and to prompt the speakers so they don't have to look at the notes. Adding clip art and pictures will not make a boring and disorganized PowerPoint presentation an effective teaching tool, and even worse, they can be a distraction in the learning process. For additional reading on presentation graphics design, you may want to read some of Edward Tufts' books or articles, www.edwardtuft.com. Before we go into a more in-depth discussion about how to create and edit images and video, let us first take a look at how media can be displayed or delivered in a training course. We will examine computer projection systems, audience response systems, video and DVD, document camera, electronic overhead projectors, as well as flip charts and whiteboards. The projector can display high-quality images and videos. It is easy to modify the content on the computer and display when compared to printed training materials. This makes it fairly easy and inexpensive to customize the training for specific audiences. In some cases, it may be easier to transport, but one significant downside are technical issues. Sometimes a trainer may experience difficulty when connecting a projector to laptops. So always leave plenty of time for testing the equipment. Of course, you are by now familiar with PowerPoint slides presentations, and by now you also see how you should know how PowerPoint slide decks can be converted into video training material. You are also familiar with how computer projectors can be connected to computers to display these slideshows to a larger audience. A trainer can attach a tablet PC computer to the projector to make the PowerPoint presentation more interactive by annotating the slides with an electronic pen or marker. The instructor can also use a blank slide as an electronic whiteboard. Some training facilities will dedicate interactive electronic whiteboards, such as smart boards. This training tool and delivery method is good for brainstorming during a needs analysis session or focus group, problem solving, and collaborating on a document. They are useful in training, as well as working with a design team and building your training courses. Attached to a projector or standalone on a television or computer, a training often uses DVDs to demonstrate a technique or skill. 
Another use for video is to show behaviors and compare and contrast the right way and the wrong way to do something. Document cameras are used in place of overhead projectors, but these devices are connected to a computer. The trainer can place papers, books, or other relatively flat materials under the projector's camera and enlarge them for display in a larger classroom. Unlike overhead projectors, you do not need to use transparency film with a document camera. And don't forget the tried and true, ever dependable flip chart and whiteboard. Or even chalk and a blackboard. These training technologies rarely break, but make sure you have new markers. Just like electronic whiteboards, these are great tools for brainstorming, collecting ideas, reporting back from groups and teams, tracking user questions and inputs, and as backup for equipment failures. The downsides of these low-tech training tools are the limited audience size, difficulty reading some people's handwriting, and it is difficult to save and reuse the information stored on them. Before we begin to work with images and video for our training course, we should first concentrate on the content and text for our presentation. In this section, we will discuss some basic principles for creating effective and aesthetic print materials to accompany a training course. You will want to develop some handouts or quick start guides for most training, even those courses that are delivery online. How many different types of training handouts or printed resources can you think of? We already mentioned quick start guides. Often these are only one page and include simple instructions, text, and images to guide a novice user through some basic steps or procedures. You can create a series of quick start guides for more complicated applications such as EOHR systems. Each guide would focus on one specific function in the EOHR and most likely address only one learning objective. Course packets could be as simple as a PowerPoint handout containing the slides used in your presentation. We will discuss these in more detail in the next section. Other items you may want to include in the course packets are the course goals and learning objectives, instructor or help desk information, knowledge tests, quizzes, or application exercises used during class, and additional learning resources. Most of these can be developed in a word processing application. In addition to giving the students printed copies during the training course, you may post an Acrobat file of the document online. A training manual is usually a very detailed instruction book describing how to use a specific application. Some uses of training manuals include Trainees can use the manual for reviewing the subject after training. It lets the trainee concentrate and partake in the training during the training session instead of taking detailed notes. It can serve as a reference document in the workplace. Self-paced guides Designed for trainees to work through on their own. Reference manuals For containing detailed information on processes and procedures. Training and performance improvement is an ongoing process and does not end after the training course is over. Many clinics and hospitals publish regular newsletters about the EHR implementation, and this communication tool can be a valuable asset to a comprehensive training program. The newsletter could be printed, but many take the form of emails or other electronic publications. Electronic newsletters are a great way to remind users of tips to improve work performance and clinical outcomes and they are inexpensive and effective ways to inform the users about new features and small upgrades to the system. A comprehensive EHR training website can be a good way to organize all the information and training resources for an implementation project. In addition to posting schedules for training courses, you can provide links to training documents and videos, create a FAQ, frequently asked questions section, and post daily updates. This website could be jointly managed with a central help desk unit. There are many social software applications you can use on the training website, such as RSS feeds and various types of podcasts. Some larger companies may have a learning management system, which will manage all the training resources as well as track learner or student achievement, and in these cases you may need a separate website. We learned earlier in this lesson that the first and most important part of creating training resources is to focus on the content and text. After you have a good draft of the text, you can start to work on the layout and design of the course. Since we are discussing print materials, 
Let us look at some basic rules for layout that are specific to resources like training manuals, quick start guides, and newsletters, but are also applicable to PowerPoint presentations and websites. In the next few minutes, we will consider corporate branding and general style, including logos and font styles, page layout such as margins and white space, graphics placement on the page, scannability and navigation to make reading easier, and the print production process. Before starting a training manual project in any company, you should first look for a corporate style guide or branding resource. These resources contain logos and graphics that can be used in your training materials and often give suggestions or requirements on which fonts should be used and specific definitions of colors for print and web-based materials. Strive for consistency in your materials and see if there are templates that will get you started quickly. Avoid using more than two or three fonts in a document. Fonts can be in italic, bold, light, heavy, or condensed versions. Avoid all uppercase as it is difficult to read and use bold, italic, or other versions of the font for emphasis and sparingly. Titles, headings, and subheadings should be in a larger font size than the body of the text. When combining different fonts, use fonts that are clearly distinct to create contrast. A general recommendation is to use a sans serif font for headings and a serif font for the body of the text. Do not put too much text or too many images on a page. A clean and minimal look is often easier to read and more pleasing. You should strive for about 25% of the page to be white space, blank space on the page. Use spacing to signal to the reader that a new section is starting. Consistency in the style of the elements, headings, graphics, and arrangement give visual clues to the reader. It also unifies the different parts of the handout and creates visual interest. Images and illustrations should appear on the same page as the related text. Group related pieces of information and other items together to form a cohesive unit to organize the content in a logical order. Avoid too many separate elements on the page and use white space to separate unrelated items. The alignment of text and graphics is another technique for organizing your content. All the elements, text and graphics, should appear unified and interrelated by their placement on the page. A well-designed document is easy to read and navigate. Chunk or break down the text into sections or paragraphs. Short headings, paragraphs, and lists make content more scannable. Headers and footers, including page numbers, make the entire document easy to navigate. Creating contrast between sections in your document can visually organize the page, leading the eye of the reader from one section to the next. Color could be used in text for emphasizing and in graphics where appropriate. When used correctly, color increases learning and retention. But don't get carried away and use too many colors. You aren't designing a coloring book. Here are some other tips. Section dividers that extend beyond the page width make it easy to find sections, especially if it has the topics printed on the tabs. This is especially appropriate for a bulky manual that is to be used over several sessions. A detailed table of contents at the beginning of sections, in addition to the main table of contents at the front of the manual, makes it more accessible. Allow wide enough margins to accommodate the type of binding used, as well as space for users to make key notes. If you are creating a large, formal training manual that will also be used as a technical reference in the clinic, you may need to send the file to a print shop. Be sure to contact the printer early in the design process. Keep in mind these production steps. Copy edit. Write and proof the text. Collect and edit graphics for inclusion in the manual. Combine all assets into one file using a word processor or other publishing software. Make backup copies of your file. Send files to printers after checking which file formats they accept. Finally, be aware of copyright and other legal issues before reproducing the manual. This concludes the lecture on selecting and working with media. The summary of this lecture is that number one, you learned how to construct a simple instructional product such as an online tutorial or training manual that contains appropriate media elements such as images, graphics, and video. 
Number two, remember to select appropriate instructional media for a given lesson plan and objectives or goals and make sure you take into account any special requirements of your students. In number three, we discussed how to edit and customize images to embed in training materials. Working with video requires powerful computers and lots of storage, but most computers come with built-in video editing software. Select and edit your video, such as EHR screen captures, to embed in training materials. Once you have your media selected and edited, you are ready to build simple online tutorials.